A model steamboat named Edith, part 28, fitting the radio control linkage to operate the rudder. But first of all, I'm giving this part another coat of green paint. This is the cover for the radio control hatch. And what I'm doing here is painting part of the hinges grey to match the deck. And while the paint's drying on that, I'll just show you one or two things here. These are a couple of pieces of M6 studding and a pack of bolts. And a very large pump. These are not for Edith, of course. These are for the Castle Steam V6 boiler plant. This pump is much larger and has a ram of three quarters of an inch in diameter. I also bought some steam taps. I bought six of each just to stock up. 3 8 by 32, 5 16 by 32 and quarter by 40. I also bought this 3 8 by 32 check valve to modify the inlet to the water pump. And as my stock of nuts and union cones was running low, I bought quite a lot of these. Very soon I have to build a steam plant that uses three engines, so I need a water tank and condenser, and this is the copper tube for those. Until recently, I was working at a company called the Steam Workshop two days a week, rebuilding and refurbishing steam engines. And it was fine, I really enjoyed it, until they set on a machinist, and this machinist would insist on singing all the time, which made it impossible for me to get any workshop ambience on the video. And by singing, I use the term lightly, it was more like listening to a hippopotamus giving birth. I mentioned it to Simon, and Simon asked him to stop doing it, but a couple of weeks later, he started up again. And that was it for me, I was out of there. But the good news is, Simon is bringing engines to my workshop so I can work on them. And the first project is a rebuild on this. It's a bit of a mess, but I always did like a challenge. And what I'm going to do with this locomotive is convert it into Hogwarts Castle the locomotive which is featured in the Harry Potter films. I'll be starting this job very shortly, and the first part of the job will be to remove the boiler and take it back to the steam workshop to be painted. This locomotive is not an accurate scale model in any way, and it's not a castle, it is a hall, because Hogwarts Castle is not a castle either, it's a hall class locomotive. This locomotive will need quite a lot of modification to make it look the part. I look forward to starting the job. But for now, it's back to Edith. There are not many episodes left to go yet before this boat is ready to sail. What's coming up, though, is the hardest part, putting it all together. As far as model boats go, this is quite a large one, but the access to the internal part of the boat is very tight, just through the two hatches in the deck. You're looking at the moment at the radio control module that I made. I'm just checking how it's going to work, and I've had to modify it. I've always known that I would need to modify this because the radio control unit that I'm using in the boat is a very simple one. It does not have computer control, so I can't limit the travel of the servos. They're always going to travel the full length, which is not a problem for this one. This is the rudder servo. All I have to do with this is connect it to the tiller arm that I made. And the best way to do that is to use one of these. These are really useful things to have in the workshop. You start off with a piece of stainless steel wire, and by cutting the stainless steel wire in half and using this tool, you can see how it works. And these tools are called Z-Bend pliers. I made two of these linkages and they're both identical in length. And here's the rudder moving from side to side, without any binding. I knew that the steam engine was going to be quite close to the radio box, but not quite this close. But thankfully, as I made the radio box out of very thick wood, I can just shorten it slightly using the bandsaw. In case you're wondering, this is the hand pump, a very clever design. This engine was built by a really competent engineer. And this lockable ram just sits on top of the crankshaft driven water pump. Very clever indeed. I mentioned earlier that access to the inside of the hull is not good, and here are the two hatches in question. The internal components need to be fitted in a set order, starting with the water tank, then the boiler, then the steam engine, followed by the condenser. In the last episode, I made a fitting for the top of the safety valve. This is it, and I was going to use a flexible pipe, but I changed my mind. Instead, I threaded the end of the fitting to take a 3 8 by 32 union nut. So all I need to do now is bend a piece of copper pipe to approximately fit in this position, and then silver solder a union cone to the end of it. And this piece of copper pipe will follow the angle of the chimney adapter and point up the chimney to exhaust the steam from the safety valve. With the water tank already in the bow part of the hull, and the boiler sat in the hull where it's going to be, I can get the position to mount the burner in place. In this clip I'm using my bandsaw to cut the piece of brass to the right length. You will notice that I'm cutting the brass with the brass held vertically, and this makes sure that the cut is square, because the brass is held against the table which is at 90 degrees to the blade. 
and all I have to do now is place the burner unit in position on the tank, mark the position for a couple of holes, then drill a couple of holes in the tank so that I can bolt the burner to the tank itself. And with some sealant on the bolts on the inside of the tank, the tank won't leak. The next part of the job is to mount the emergency gas cutoff valve inside the boat. These gas cutoff valves are designed for radio control and are available from a company called Clevedon Steam. I need to be able to easily drain the condensate from the condenser, so I just made this. It's a piece of brass plate with a turn fitting that takes the tap, and when this is fitted into the hull, all you have to do is open the tap. Run the engine to create some back pressure in the condenser, which will pump the water out into a suitable receptacle. After silver soldering the component, I put it in my acid bath, which is where it is currently, sharing some space with some body parts. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.